obvious. Over the past several years, 3D audio formats have just blown up, whether it be Dolby Atmos or DTSX. My own personal collection of physical media uh, movies has grown with high channels. There's actually more information there than we've had previously. And so that led me to the question, which type of surround speaker is better? Should I go with a traditional surround speaker like one of these, or should I use something more like a bookshelf speaker or a tower speaker for my surrounds? So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. But before I do that, I should probably talk a little bit about how the 3D audio format is different from the traditional 2D audio format. So here we are, I've created a mock home theater setup on this table. This is your theater. You are this bunny and you are sitting in your main listening position right here. Now, first of all, I'm gonna talk about the traditional home theater layout, then I'll move on and talk about Dolby Atmos DTSX and what they've done there. But first of all, we've got our front sound stage right here. This is your front left, that's your front right, Here's your center and you've got two subwoofers here and here with your TV or your projection screen right here. There is the surround left here, surround right there, left rear, right rear here, and then another subwoofer here and here. And this gives you seven speakers on the floor with four subwoofers. Now you have a Mac Daddy process that can actually process four subwoofer channels so that you get nice balance base throughout your room. You can do distance and level for all four of these channels and give you the right sound for your room. So, I mean, this is a Mac Daddy room. Now, the way audio mixers would target a system like this traditionally with a 2D audio format like Dolby True HD or DTS HD Master Audio is they would target channels. So, for instance, you'd have vocals coming out of the center channel with some of the uh, sound mix, let's say, the orchestra or something coming out the front left, front right, and then something happening in the surrounds and you know things coming up from behind you in the rear channels. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't do other things in the mix, right? For, so for instance, if you have somebody coming in off stage, you know, across the screen, they can talk in the front right and make their way across. Those that can happen too. So they can do a lot with it. And honestly, it does sound good. I mean, I like to think of movies like Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight or Dunkirk. Those are 5.1 uh, mixes and they sound fantastic, right? So I'm not saying that these sound bad at all because they really do sound good. But that also created the invention of the surround speaker that you can do something like this a nice dispersed pattern and gives you a nice surround experience around your head because again they're targeting the surround channel here but a few years ago dolby came out with the 3d audio format they called it dolby atmos and dts followed up a few years later with their 3d audio format known as dts x now a lot of people think of the speakers that they included which are height speakers so you can put speakers in your ceiling or you can do uh, speakers that mount um, that bounce off the ceiling. But for this example, you got a Mac Daddy room there in the ceiling. You've got two speakers up front, two speakers in the center, and then two speakers at the rear. So you've got two, two, and two for a total of six speakers. Now I can't hold these here, so I'm just gonna place them here on the floor and they're gonna represent the speakers that are on the ceiling. Okay, so these are your ceiling speakers. And what they did was they didn't just target channels anymore. They decided to go with an object-based format, or I like to think of it as more of a position-based format. So for instance, you have this object, this is a bell, and it could be attached to an animal or whatever, right? It's just a bell inside your sound stage here. And it can start at the back of your room and it can come across making noise, you know, all the way over here. And let's just say it stops right here in this corner. Well, with a new object-based format or position-based format, the, speed, the sound stops here, and this is where you hear it from when you're sitting in your main listening position. If this goes up or it goes down, it can actually follow a column of sound just like that. It can even go across your room like that, or like that, or like that, because again, you've got not only surround, but you also have height. And that, again, gives you position feedback of something, and it works really, really well. So obviously now I need to test Dolby Atmos and DTSX movies to figure out which ones really kind of mess around with the position and maybe even give you a phantom speaker sound, one that works really well. So I tried a lot of different movies, including A Quiet Place, 1917, uh, Blade Runner 2049, Moonfall, and several others. But one movie that I found that works really well, especially with that phantom speaker sound, is this movie right here. 
No Time to Die, the latest James Bond movie. There's a scene in here, and I don't wanna get into too many spoilers, but there's a scene early in the movie that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But I tried that scene and a few other scenes with all of these speakers. And let me tell you a little bit about these speakers. This speaker is the Klipsch RP402S. This is a bipole design. And what that means is there are drivers on each one of these faces, basically 45 degrees apart, and they fire at the same time. And it gives you a nice diffuse sound field. So you can't really tell where the speaker is sitting in the room. That's the point, it's a surround speaker. Now, this speaker that I have right here, this is the Arendelle Sound 1723S. This is a triaxial dipole design. Um, and so triaxial because you have two drivers here on the front face, and then you have two drivers here on these sides that are firing outward like this. And it's dipole because these two drivers fire at different times like that. Like one will be firing and the other is not, and then they'll kind of do that. So this gives you a pretty diffuse soundstage. But since you've got a driver here on this front face, it has got a little bit of directionality to it. You can kind of tell where this speaker is sitting inside your theater. Now, this speaker, this is the Klipsch RP150M. This is a traditional bookshelf speaker, direct radiating. So all the sound is coming directly at you when it's sitting here. When you're sitting in your theater, you're gonna kind of know where the speaker is because it's literally firing right at you. So you can really kind of place it in the sound. So that's all of the speakers. Now let's talk about this movie. In chapter four, there is a scene where uh, James Bond is in his car and he's being chased by the bad guys and they kind of end up in the square and they kind of corner him in this square. And I like the scene because there is a lot going on. First of all, when he first gets to the square, there are bells ringing. And so you got a lot of nice Atmos effects going on overhead with those bells ringing as he gets trapped in the square. But then all the gentlemen get out, these bad guys get out and they aim their automatic weapons and they begin firing on James Bond in his car. Now, this being James Bond, his car is bulletproof. So they're firing on the car, but it's bulletproof. So James is okay. Now, as they're firing, obviously you get all of these gunshots and bullets whizzing around the soundstage and you get shells dropping off, you know, over here, ping, 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 that sort of thing. But you get two perspectives. You get the perspective or the audio perspective um, outside the car of the guys firing, but you also get the perspective inside the car where James is at being fired upon. And it's a great, great mix. And you get a lot of different things going on in that soundtrack. Now, once they stop firing, one more bad guy gets out of the car and he begins firing on the passenger side window. Thump, 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 thump. And again, you get those two perspectives outside and inside of the car. And once he stops firing, uh, the sound moves from left surround and it moves to the front left speaker and it kind of sweeps that way. But while it's sweeping that way, there's a moment where you get a almost phantom speaker in between your left surround speaker and your front speaker, basically where I had that bell. You get a sound right there. And that was the sound that I was listening to on all of the three of these speakers. And here's what I found. First of all, with this speaker, you could tell that you moved from left speaker to the front sound stage, but it was a bit more diffuse. You, you could hear the phantom speaker that was supposed to be there, but it wasn't quite there. Now, once I moved to the 1723S, you got even more you know, of that speaker being there. You still had a diffuse sound, but you got even more of that phantom speaker being in between the surround left and the front left. And you basically could call that speaker a front wide left if you want. But once I moved over to the RP150M, it got even more direct. You went from left surround to phantom to uh, front left speaker. So it really, really worked here. Whereas with these other two speakers, it was just a bit more diffuse. Now, like I said, I also tried a quiet place. And there's a scene, I think it's chapter five, when a pregnant mother is checking her baby's heartbeat. She's got a nice little stethoscope and she puts that on her belly and she starts listening to the heartbeat. And that heartbeat starts in the center channel and it radiates out into the room. And it kind of finally finishes off in that left surround speaker. And again, with the RP402S, it was diffused from that left surround. And then once you move over to the 1723S, because it's got that direct radiator, it's still diffuse, but you can kind of tell where it is. And then again, once you move to the traditional bookshelf speaker, you can really hear that it's coming from the left surround speaker. So I think of these as good, better, and best, with the direct radiating speaker being the best 
for your 3D audio formats and a surround speaker. I tried both this speaker and a Q Acoustics uh, 3010i, which is a slightly different type of bookshelf speaker. It's a little bit smaller than this one, just to make sure I could still get that positional effect and it still worked as I expected it to. So that's good. Now, Dolby also releases a document for live studio mixing and they tell you, you know, what type of speakers you need for Atmos mixing and, you know, what frequency range they need to represent, all of those things. And they recommend direct radiating speakers as well for your left center, right, left surround, right surround speakers and they do say don't use a horn based speaker like this one that I have here but they say use direct radiating versus a bipole or a dipole speaker for surrounds so if you are thinking about uh, purchasing speakers go for a direct radiating not one of these now if you have one of these types of speakers as your surround in your home theater right now don't worry about it because you're still getting some of that positional change it's just a bit more diffuse but if you want to purchase some right now use those links in the description below but if you found this video helpful definitely drop me a comment in the comment section below because it's nice to know when i make videos that you guys really enjoy and honestly I'm, i enjoy making these videos as well but just let me know also give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and if you want to purchase any new gear use those links in the description below thank you for watching i'll talk to you next time Thank you.